Yeah. Yeah, although I'm seeing comments that we're having issues with the audio again for the Zoom. Um, thank you, Anthony, if you can hear us for letting us know. <laughs> Anthony cannot hear us. Um, um, Oh, Dan says everyone can hear me, but not Gloria. So I guess, yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us this evening and um, sticking with us while we've been dealing with some technical difficulties. Um, if you're here, you probably know a little bit about the project that we're working on, but um, we are getting ready to go into the studio next week to record a 45 minute piece composed by James Osten with visuals uh, animation by Shi Li, who's also doing live art on the stream tonight. Um, and we'll keep talking about this through the chat, or sorry, through the stream. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about the set that I just did. Um, I played two pieces. The first piece was actually an excerpt from Dreamer Fly, uh, a little vibe solo from the movement Lonely. And the second piece is was <laughs> by Dallas Joseph Howard, and that was titled Somnolence, which is the urge to sleep. And Dallas wrote this piece for me about three years ago. And since then, it's seen just many different <laughs> versions and arrangements, anywhere from percussion with vibraphone to live electronics and vibraphone. And then today I did a version for fixed media and vibraphone solo. And I picked this piece for you all tonight um, for a couple reasons. I was kind of reflecting on the last year of, you know, playing a lot of music at home and in small spaces. Um, and really like for myself, not in, for an audience, you know? Um, so it's just been a really like personal kind of journey with music in the last year. And I found myself really gravitating more towards um, just quiet and more intimate pieces and, and pieces that I think really call for small spaces um, like a tiny London flat. Um, so, I'm so glad that you guys could all make it tonight. I'm going to see if we're ready to go for our next performer, Daniel Kemschel. Gloria just wants to give me a thumbs up if we're ready. I can see her on the Zoom. Let's see in the chat. Good morning to you, Anthony in California. Thank you for helping us figure out our um, live stream issues. Like 
Um, hi everyone, this is uh, Xi Yi and uh, uh, I'm the visual artist uh, of Dream of Fly and Other Stories. Um, thank you for everyone joining us tonight. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the music and uh, my life drawing so far. And uh, okay, another thing like um, that was Dan Kemshaw uh, who played the guitar uh previously and he forgot to introduce himself so like mm, today i would love to uh share, share some of my experience of interpreted music with uh, eight millimeters film um basically it's like a draw on film technique uh on at eight millimeters I believe some of some of you guys um, might already know this kind of technique, and um, so like Norman Mike Lauren and uh, Lei Lai, they did something with that um, with jazz music. So, um, so is this? Yeah. So I'm not sure if any of you guys have tried this kind of thing before but i think it's really fun uh, i use this eight millimeters film to uh, do many like uh, animations uh, for dream of fly uh, for one section of the dream of fly and um, yeah i think there is one like really good thing about this kind of technique is because you can draw like on the film directly and you can draw anything you feel about the music um, so it's like pure express sorry it's like pure express in expression that if you feel the music it's a little bit like blue or if you, you think the music sounds a little bit red or if you think uh, the music sounds a little bit uh, yellow so you can just directly use different kinds of colors of pen and draw on the film um yeah and then if you got like a projector like this if you can see this yeah if you got a projector like this you can just put the film directly on the projector and you can just like project the film and you can see the animation directly so it's quite straightforward um yeah, so, oh, if you don't have the projector, you can just use like a scanner or like a camera to shoot the film. So I can show you some like process if you want. So I suggest, so it looks like this, you can see this. So uh, I suggest you can use different kinds of tool to do, to do the drawing. So for instance, you can choose this kind of pen. Um, so it's like Posca, like Posca. So basically there is like a pen inside the pen and uh, you can also choose uh, this kind of pen. So this is uh, liquid ink in this kind of pen. The reason why I choose different kind of tools to draw something on the film is because uh, it costs like different kind of texture. So if you use this kind of pen, um, if you draw a little dot like on the film and then there will be some scene in the middle of the dot. I can show you guys later. And uh, if you use uh, this kind of link, um, sorry, ink pen, then the thing you draw on the film is quite smooth and uh, it's quite fluid and there's like no thing in the middle at all. So, um, so it's quite fun because you can mix different um, textures together and sometimes the effect you got might surprise you a lot. Um, so I can just draw something on here. So if you listen to like some jazz 
and you feel the jazz might be a little bit like red. Okay. Okay. Um, so another thing is, if you can see like right here, okay, it's like, so basically you can see small frames, small frames on the film. Um, each of them, so it's like a small single image and you can draw whatever you want on them, but just make sure you draw them on the right position. Okay. Um, so I just drew a very simple thing. Just draw little dots in the middle of each frame. And I can keep them in the same position or just kind of like messing around, just like draw a very long line on film. And uh, you just, I think another thing I really like about this is you don't overthink like what you need to draw to interpret the music. It's just draw whatever you feel. And um, yeah, I think it's quite like pure expression. Oh, yeah, so I just draw whatever I want. Okay. Oh, can you actually, I don't think you can actually see, but you can see like here. This is what I just drew. Okay. And then I'm gonna use another, another pen. I uh, use the, the green one. So this the, the ink pen. Let's draw on here. I can draw a little bit. Small dots. Have anyone ever tried this kind of thing before? You can leave a comment. Maybe we can share some experience together. Okay. You can even do a little like um, draw straight ahead animation. So like um, a blink eye. Oh, maybe I can just bring the camera down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and then Okay, so I can just Put this directly on the projector. Sorry.
Okay. You can actually. Can you guys see? All right. Can you? So this is I mentioned that oh, is that part here. So it's quite short. I think does anyone can see that. So Yeah, so you can see the movement is quite like, um, like vibrate color and the movement is like a lot. So I think it can, you can do some editing afterwards. Like you can use the camera to shoot the animation and uh, it can work really well with different kinds of music. And if you want to like add any like narrative on your film, you can also use Another kind of pen to draw some like line on top of on top of the pen, and it can have like another kind of effect. Yeah. So that's another way to integrate. Sorry. Oh. Shoot. Okay. And also we can use. You can find something like sharp, like a pen over here, and you can scratch the film as well because the film I got is like not uh, one hundred transparent. So you can use uh, this kind of thing to scratch the film. So the lights will actually come through the film directly. So you see. something like this just scratch a line I think basically uh, the really interesting about the draw on film animation is you can messing around with lots of different kind of tools and textures and you can see the results straight away um, Sometimes just feel like really magical. So I'll just scratch a little. This time I'm gonna try another color. So I'll try the blue. It's not really working. Let's try gray. Okay. 
sometimes even you just like made some mistake. That's totally fine because mistake can make it looks even better sometimes. So I think basically there's no mistake if you do draw film animation on eight millimeters. millimeters. Do a little bit more. And even mix different color. Mm. Let's do something fun, okay? Uh, usually, I'm gonna use the blue. Well, you can do something very simple that it's gonna have like really fun results. I uh, can just draw a triangle. Uh, this is not triangle. A square and uh, can become smaller and then become bigger. Oh, another thing is just remember to draw every frame like. So you can see there's like a small um, square on the edge. You can see that. So basically that is um, the thing. And you can tell uh, which is the frame. So the little square is on the middle of the frame. You just make sure you do everything um, in the middle of the small triangle. Okay. And then we can draw a circle. Oh yeah, it's like if you guys um, I'm interested in, in buying the drawing that I just did. Uh, just remind you guys, we still have like more paintings uh, you can purchase on Dreamfly Kickstarter. And uh, thanks for everyone for being here tonight with us and supporting us. It really, really means a lot. Okay, let's see how it looks like.
Okay, I think we have a small accident here. So can you see there is a frame like burned? Can you see that? So actually uh, this kind of film is like really easy to burn. So when you do that kind of um, experiment with yourself, just be careful because this is like very delicate um, tool. Okay. Okay, let's try another time. See if this gonna be fine. Yeah, you guys actually see this. So, okay. Let's see. Well, that's how it's gonna look like. Quite small, but. Yeah. So you can see those like different. See, there is kind of like different texture mixed together uh, with different tools. Okay. And also, what you can play with is you can use uh, actual film that's something you already filmed, some, some footage with your uh, camera. So, the camera I use is like Super 8. And if you can see, like, there's a teeny tiny films on this one. So this is the footage that I took in Birmingham. Um, I hope. Wait. So what do you can play with? Is you can do some like um, draw something on top of the film, and it can just like interact with the footage that you already did. If you can see, no, okay, it's not gonna work. Yeah, so you can use the technique that I um, introduced previously, like use the postcard um, pen to draw on the film, or you can use something sharp to scratch the film and it will have like really nice effect. Or you can use uh, this kind of ink pen and just to draw directly on the film as well. Yeah. I show you some footage. Um, okay. Do something here. Use the red.
You can even like draw directly on the outline of the footage. So it will look like the like actual line, uh, very analog line on top of the human or like on top of the footage objects like you filmed in, in those Also, the projector actually you can choose. Um, they are like 40, um, 24 frames per second or 18 frames per second. Yeah, sometimes even you just draw like uh, the same straight line, it will also look animated because actually the every line you draw is gonna be different, although you're trying to keep the like uh, look similar. So I think like every differences, like very tiny differences you drew on the film. Actually, when you project the film through the projector, it will um, extra the the effect, the differences. Let's see how it's gonna look like. Well, actually I really want you guys to see how this. It's really, really long. And, uh, okay, here we go.
now you can see a little bit better. So actually you can see like I use different pen and also use um, something sharp to scratch the film. It looks, yeah, it's like a very special um, quality. Okay, let's see. And sometimes you can even put some narratives using. Um, so basically, you can think the footage you took is kind of one narrative in a film. And then, if you draw something on the top of the film, actually, it's like another uh, second narrative um, on the film. So when you just physically combine them together, um, kind of you are telling two different stories at the same time. It could be another kind of like multiple narrative uh, method. Yeah, so I think if you guys want to try this, you can, uh, I bought this like product uh, on eBay and uh, also my camera too. And you can buy some really, really nice film on like some website. If you guys like, I can share the link with you guys later. So let's see. But just remember because um, this kind of material is quite delicate. So when you actually using the projector, just remember to um, don't use it like for too long. Otherwise the machine will get like too hot and probably your film gonna burn. Trying to make one. Oh, if you got if you got like a knife, and there's another very interesting effect you can do. Like you can just put a knife directly on the pen and um, um, put the pen on the on the frame. I don't have any knife at the moment, but what we can do is I can use um, the brush. Well, I think and this is like an acrylic pen. The acrylic pen have really different kind of texture than the postcard pen and uh, the ink pen because um, I think this kind of pen is like thicker than the, the, the um, tools we tried before.
Thanks everyone for being here today. Um, I want to say a huge thank you for Gloria to doing um, a lot of the uh, admin work on this. She's been a huge help and we couldn't do it without her. Thanks for amazing performances by she, Dan and Lindsay. It's so great to hear some of my own music performed and we're really looking forward to recording next week. Um, on the subject of that, I'm going to play a piece now which was written for Dream of Fly and Other Stories. This is my section of the third movement. And the piece I just played was a really old American songbook standard called Stardust, one of my favorite tunes at the moment by Hoagie Carmichael. <laughs>
Thanks so much for watching Gloria's performance next. How about now? Is my sound working now? No sound. I'll try one more thing. I can hear myself somewhere. Turn the game down. I have to lean in to do this. Thanks for bearing with me. Sorry, my sound was an issue this whole time. How about now? Thanks for waiting, everybody. All right, I'm gonna take my monitor out because I'm hearing myself twice. And I'm gonna play a little bit for you, then I can talk after that.
Thank you for being here again. That was an improvisation. I'm going to play a little bit of our pre-recorded track. We recorded this back in October for an installation version of Dreamer Fly. That installation was in, where was it? It was in Coventry in the UK and it was an immersive, I'll show you a photo, you'll see what it is. You can walk in there and there are projections 360 degrees around you. And so we recorded two tracks remotely from our homes for this of James music. And so this is the music that will be in the final version of Dreamer Fly. It'll sound slightly different than it already did in this recording you're about to hear. But otherwise, it's that music. It's the music from Dreamer Fly. So I hope you enjoy. And then I'm going to reset my room so I can play an excerpt of Lonely. And that'll be the last bit of this live stream. Thanks again for being here.
think we're ready to go. Can everyone hear me okay? I'm gonna wait for a text again. Or I'll wait for head nods on Zoom, one or the other. Okay, I got a thumbs up. Thank you. Thanks for the feedback, everyone. This is Lonely from Dreamer Find Other Stories, a part of it. for coming. That's all. Um, thanks for being here. We appreciate you so much. If you can donate to the Kickstarter, we'd appreciate it a lot. All the paintings that were painted today that she is still going, um, those are available in our one-of-a-kind tier on the Kickstarter. And today you heard from Lindsay Easton on percussion, Daniel Kemschel on guitar, Shi E. Lee showing us her amazing animation, James Osin on double bass, and I'm Gloria Halevsky 